Have you ever wondered or think to yourself, what is the best way or the best techniques to retouch skin inside of Photoshop? Well, I've retouched more than 5,000 images in the past two years. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my best techniques I used to retouch image inside of Photoshop. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or a professional, you are going to learn from this video. Let's jump right into it. Now, the first thing I'll do once I put my image inside of Photoshop, I'm just going to duplicate my layer by pressing on Ctrl J and just remove the blemishes. Now, I use the retouch on me to remove my blemishes because instead of spending time actually remove the blemishes, with the retouch on me plugin, I can just remove the blemishes in just one click. And also, if that is this for me, I'm going to show you how you can do it manually. So, to use the retouch on me to remove your blemishes, all you have to do is come to your filter right here, click on retouch on me. I click on heal right here once i click on heal it's just going to remove the blemishes for me as you can see so if i just zoom in you can see the blemishes are no longer there so this is the before and this is the after the before and the after so i'm going to click on apply right here now if you don't have the resource let me show you how you can do it manually now i use the focus separation method to remove my blemishes manually instead of just using the spot healing brush tool or the patch tool now the reason why i like using the focus separation method to remove my blemishes it's because the blemishes consist of the textures and the refocus separation we separated the textures and the color so i have more control i have more accurate results when i use the close time tool using focus separation instead of just allowing photoshop to just automatically fill the spot on me by using the focus separation i have more control over it so to do it manually with focus separation all you have to do is come to my action right here and by the way i'm giving out my actions for free i believe in the quick i get this action in the description below once you open up that action just click on tell your system bit right here if your image is system bit but if your image is 8 bits, click on Tillens 8 bits right here. And for this image, I'm going to be using a focus separation blur radius of 6.5 and click on OK. Now, since we separated the colors and the textures, now to move the blemishes, I'm going to come to my texture layer, which is this high frequency copy right here, which is this first one right here, and just zoom in, pick my close time tool. Once I pick my close time tool, I'm just going to sample from a close by area and just paint over the blemishes. So make sure you use your square bracket key to increase and decrease your brush size according to the blemishes you want to remove. So if you want to remove a small blemishes, make sure you're using a small brush size. If you want to remove a bigger blemishes, make sure you're using a big brush size just like so. And look at these stains right here. I'm just going to remove them. So sample, alternate to sample and just paint over those blemishes right there to remove them. Press alternate to sample and just paint over it like that to remove the blemishes just like that so this is the before and the after also look at the hair right here i'm just going to sample and just remove this hair right there like so and also sample and just paint so basically i'm going to be doing this for the whole of this image to remove the blemishes now that we remove the blemishes it's time to smooth out the skin and there are two ways or two methods you can actually use to smooth out the skin. You can either use the focus separation method or you can use the micro dodge and bond method. But the micro dodge and bond actually give the best results. So the technique I usually use is the micro dodge and bond and frequency separation. And we all know micro dodge and bond actually takes a lot of time. That's why I have the retouch on me to do it for me in just one click. So all I have to do is create a stamp visible layer by pressing on Ctrl Shift Alternate E and use my retouch on me to actually do my micro dodge and bond. So I come to my filter, I come to my retouch on me and click on dodge and burn right here so instead of spending hours or 30 minutes doing micro dodge and burn this retouch on me will just do it for me in less than 50 seconds or 20 seconds it just do one click actually so it has finished so it's just processing the image right now all right it has finished processing the image so if i just zoom in you can see it has done the micro dodge and burn for us in less than 20 seconds so this is the before and the after the before and the after so i'm going to click on apply right here make sure soft layer is selected and just click on apply right here so next time i'm going to do i'm just going to come to my blend mode and change it from normal to soft light to bring back the original colors of the image so this is the before micro dodge and burn and this is after micro dodge and burn and i highly recommend you get this retouch from your plugin if you're actually making money off photography and retouching there are tons of features inside it saves you a lot of time and it's going to give you the best result all right now this time i'm going to do i'm not going to be using focus separation to smoothen out this skin even more so i come to my action right here click on focus separation system bit and just use focus separation blur radius of 6.5 and click on ok and for focus separation blur, blur radius if you want to retain texture on your image use a high focus separation number while if you want your image to be smooth use a low focus separation Gaussian blur radius number so just play with the slider and see which one works for you now once i run that action i'm going to pick my mixer brush tool 
If my mixer brush tool, make sure your clean brush after each throw right here is selected. My weight is on 30, my load is on 20, mix is on 90, it doesn't really matter because this place is on transparent. And my flow is on 20, sample layer is selected because we are working on this brush layer which is an empty layer. So you can use any mixer brush settings that work for you and also you can use any frequency separation action that works for you as well. Now next I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn off this high frequency texture right here. Once I turn it off, it's going to show only the colors of the image. Now the reason why I turn this off is that if it's turned on and I try to brush with my mixer brush tool, it's just going to paint textures on the image and just damage the image. So that's why you have to turn off this high texture layer right here. So once you turn it off, it's just going to show only the color. Just come back to your brushing layer and just increase your brush size and just brush according to the shape of the image. And make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size. And also make sure you are brushing your shadow separately. Make sure you are brushing your highlight separately and make sure you are brushing your middle separately. And for the transition, I'm just going to increase my brush size a little bit and just brush on the transition to smoothen out the transition just like that. So the key point right here is not to brush your highlights into your shadow and also don't use a bigger brush to brush a small portion and a small brush to brush a bigger portion like that. So if you want to brush on this highlight on the nose right here, I'm just going to decrease my brush size and just paint on this place right here. And by the way, let me know which technique you use to touch your image in the comment section. I'd love to know. So let me just quickly show you the before and after of what we've done so far so you can see. So, so far this is what we've done. See the before, see the before and the after. The before and the after. You can see the image is still smooth. We still have the highlights, we still have the shadows. And I'm just going to continue doing that for the whole of the image. All right. Okay, we're done. Let me quickly show you the before and after. So this is the before and the after. If I just zoom, you can see. The image is smooth and we still have textures. So the before and the after. Now, I'm not going to be doing global dodge and bump for this image because the highlight and the shadow for this image are already defined. Next, I'm going to do, I'm just going to make the eye look more catchy and more appealing. So to do that, I'm just going to come to my action again and just click on eyes and teeth white new right here. Once I click on it, I'll pick my normal brush tool. Once I pick my normal brush to make sure this place is set to white. If it's on another color, just click on this black and white right here to change it to default black and white. Make sure you're using a soft hand brush, very important. Make sure your opacity is set to 100, fill is set to 100, and just paint on the white part of the eyes like this. And do the same thing for this other part. And if you make a mistake like this, just press X on your keyboard to switch to your black brush and just remove it on that part. So white reveals and black hides like that. So this is the before and this is the after. This time I'm going to do, I'm just going to feather it. So I'll come back to my properties. Once I come to my properties, I'm just going to move the feather up a little bit like this and just reduce the opacity. Now I'm just going to make the catch light of the eyes more visible. So to do that, I'm just going to come to my adjustment layer. If you can find adjustment layer right here, just come to your windows and click on adjustments right here. I'm just going to put your adjustment layer, click on curves adjustment layer. Just click on this preset default and change it to lighter RGB. Once you change this to lighter RGB, just invert the layer by pressing on Ctrl I to hide that effect and just pick your normal brush tool again. Pass it to 100, flow set to 100, make sure you use a white brush and just paint on only the white catch light on the eye like so to make it more catchy. So this is the before, you can see the way it was and the after, the before and the after. Now next I'm going to do, I'm not going to use my remove tool to remove those black thing inside the eyes so i don't like that dark part inside the eyes so i'm going to use my remove tool to remove it and also i don't like this thing right here on the eyes i'm going to remove it to my remove tool and also some some um latches right here i'm just going to remove them using the remove tool so to do that i'm going to create a new empty layer like this once i create a new empty layer i'm going to pick my remove tool once i pick my remove tool make sure sample wall layer is selected and i'm just going to paint on this black thing inside the eyes like this also paint on this part right here so basically, I'm just going to brush on anything I want to remove from the image, like so. So once I select everything I want to remove, I'm just going to click on OK right here. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. So just take your time to remove what you want to remove. And don't use this method to remove your blemishes. Instead, use the close time tool like I explained earlier. Don't use the remove tool to remove your blemishes. Instead, it's going to leave patches right there if you use it. All right. Now, next I'm going to do, I just want to make the eyes look more attractive and more catchy. So to do that, I'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing on Ctrl Shift Alternate E. Once I do that, I'll come back to my action. Just click on Unsharpen Eyes and Lip Mask right here. 
Once I click on it, I'm not going to pick my white brush. Just increase my brush size, opacity to 100, full set to 100. Make sure your normal brush is selected and you're using your white brush. So just increase your brush size and just paint on only the eyes like this. And do the same thing for only the lips like this, just to add that punch to the eyes and the lips just like that. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. So basically, this is the best technique and the best way I used to retouch all my image. And if you are curious and you want to learn how the retouch on me actually works, click on this video right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.